Manchester United's results against the so-called Big Six have been called into question after another 0-0 draw, this time against Chelsea. If you look at United's results, our last four games have been 0-0 against Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool and City. Now, it depends which way you look at those stats. On the one hand, United have only conceded one goal in our last six against these Big Six rivals, which is a superb defensive record. On the other hand, we have scored zero goals and United's misfiring forwards are clearly a big issue at Man United at the moment. But for me, there is a more pressing issue that sums up, I feel, a struggle that United are trying to do at the moment in a transition from where we are to where we want to be. And for me, Scott McTominay and Fred are the reason that we are struggling with that. And I, please watch the whole video before you leave a comment because I want to explain exactly what I mean by that. And make sure you subscribe if you're new, I suppose. But I want to explain why I think their partnership in midfield is part of, of a problem that United really do have at the moment under Solskjaer. And I want to start this conversation by having a look at a comparison of our lineups from these last seven big games against Spurs, Arsenal, City, Chelsea and Liverpool. And let's start with the game against Chelsea there at the weekend. We've got... Well, it's the standard 4-2-3-1 that we always revert to. Maguire and Lindelof are always there and Fred and McTominay are in midfield. We go to the game against Arsenal in January. Fred and McTominay are there as the two holding midfielders with Pobre on the left, Rashford on the front, Bruno in the middle and Cavani up front. That was 0-0. Let's go back to January with Liverpool. Fred and McTominay there with Martial on the left, Pobre on the right this time, Fernandes and Rashford. Back to City in December, McTominay and Fred are there with Greenwood and Pobre on the wings with Fernandes in the middle and Rashford up front. Let's go to Arsenal at home. We see Fred as the sole defensive midfielder with McTominay and Popper in front of him. Fernandes more of a diamond midfield with Greenwood and Rashford up front. We lost that one, 1-0. One then you go back to October with Chelsea. You've got McTominay and Fred in midfield with Mata and James this time on the wings with Fernandes in the middle and Rashford up front. And then you go back to Spurs. And you've got Matic and Pogba in midfield. No sign of Fred or McTominay at all. Both of whom came on in that game with Greenwood and Rashford on the wings. Fernandes in the middle and Martial up front. Now, I don't think it will take a rocket scientist to see the patterns that are in all of those games. Apart from the Spurs game. And I'll explain why I think that is the case. Fred and McTominay. There are always our two holding midfielders in these big games. And certainly there's plenty of positive reasons for that. Look how defensively solid we are in these games. As I said, in our last six performances in these, ma in these matches, these, these top-tier matches, I suppose, if you want to call them, we've conceded one goal. They press better than anybody in the team. And we have a new press, not a new pressing style, but they sum up that attitude, their attitude and approach and their press. They're better than any other midfielders that we've got in this squad. And that's why Solskjaer loves and trusts them. And the fact that I don't think Solskjaer's got full belief in his defence means he's trying to solidify that defence by putting more of a barrier in front with the defensive midfield setup, And it's worked in these games. But for me, this is the big issue. Because what got us here won't get us there. And by that I mean 12, 18 months ago, United were a laughing stock in the Premier League. Not even considered any sort of challenger. And look where we are now. And McTominay and Fred and this setup, this has helped get us to this stage. But what we want to do now it's go from being on the cusp of being a challenger to being a team capable of winning the Premier League. And that's what I mean when I say what got us here won't get us there because what helped transform us from a laughing stock to a team on the edge of being challengers is not going to be the same team that takes us from being on the edge of challenging to potentially winning the Premier League. And that's a transition that we're going through at the moment. And you can see it in how we're playing in these big games as well because previously United in these big six games we'd always sit hugely deep We'd sit compact and we'd try and burst on the counter-attack. At that moment, that's all we were good for. It's not the case anymore. We control more of the game. And because we control more of the game, we don't need two defensive midfielders to sit in front of our defence, to screen our defence, because we need to be more aggressive. We need to be more confident of the fact that we're going into these games now, not as just this plucky underdog that might come and sneak a win, we have to go into these games thinking that we are going to win. And that change of mentality, for me, has to be represented in a change of tactics and a change of style and a change of personnel. But unfortunately for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he's been burned the two times where he has tried to make a difference here. Let's go back to the Arsenal formation. You can see here, Fred is sitting there as the sole defensive midfielder. 
You've got McTominay and Pogba in front of him. And it did not work, did it? Because in that formation, McTominay was operating as effectively a proper right central midfielder. He was on the wing a lot and he was lost. He, McTominay's much better going up and down in straight lines. He's a box-to-box -box midfielder. He's not really going to cover the wings as well. Uh, and because of that, we haven't seen that in a big six game since because Fred isn't good enough to hold that defensive midfield position on his own. He needs McTominay there as protection. And the only other time where he did try something different was back to the 6-1 against Spurs. And that's where you saw Matic and Popper together. And they were both taken off. And that just did not work. And Fred and McTominay came on when United, I think, were 4-1 down. Ultimately, we lost 6-1, so it didn't really help that much. But there are two times where Solskjaer has tried to be different. And two times where United have gone into this big six game and lost. Every other time, we haven't lost. Sure, we haven't won, but we haven't lost. And for me, I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been a bit burned by that 6-1 and a bit burned by that 1-0. In the two games where he tried something different, United lost. And he doesn't want to repeat that. So he's defaulting to this position where he's got McTominay and Fred who he trusts and who deliver because we do not concede in these games. But we do not score as well. Now that's not down to McTominay and Fred per se because that should be Rashford, Greenwood, Bruno Fernandes need to be improving in these games as well, surely. Our strikers are misfiring. And that's certainly a huge issue. But it's just as big an issue for me. And I've been saying this for such a long time. But United need to sign a true top class, world class defensive midfielder for us to make that transition from a team being on the cusp of challenging to a team who can genuinely win the Premier League. Because with that world class defensive midfielder, we can play a proper 4-3-3 or a, four, a diamond. We can play that formation, for example, that we used against Arsenal that we lost with. Because you can see Fred is sitting there on his own in front of the defence. That's all you need if you've got a top class, world class defensive midfielder. And then you've got two central midfielders in front of him. That can be Pogba and Fred, or Pogba and Van der Beek, or, or Pogba and McTominay. There's a whole host of good central midfielders that United have. And then you've got Bruno Fernandes as the number 10. And for me, the missing piece is a defensive midfielder because that's the reason that we can't go, can't go into these games against the big six and reflect that transition that we've, I think we've done over the last 12, 18 months in, in becoming a team, moving away from being a laughing stock to a team that can actually challenge. But we can't reflect that in the starting 11 that we have because we don't have that defensive midfielder. And for me, it's arguably more important to sign a defensive midfielder this summer than it is to sign a centre-back. You can argue both ways. You could say that the defence starts obviously in defence and that bringing in a new centre-back will, will negate the need so much for a proper defensive midfielder. But on the other hand, defence starts from attack. And if you have a midfielder there who can properly screen the defence and you don't need to rely on your two centre-backs as much... But that, for me, is just such a, a glaring issue that United have. That Solskjaer doesn't trust his defence enough to not have two defensive midfielders in these big six games. And our defensive record in these games speaks for itself. It works, but it also takes away from the attack. And you can look at that chance that McTominay had to put it in the box in the 90th minute against Chelsea. And I think that is more of a... a more of a glaring issue of, of Solskjaer's substitutions in that game because if Donny van der Beek was on at that point, then United may have got the winner towards the end. But it also refers back to my point about defensive midfielder because Solskjaer did not trust his team enough in the last 10 minutes of that game to chase it, to take off one of the defensive midfielders and put on a more attack-minded player like van der Beek. But that changes if you have a top draw defensive mid. Everything changed. The whole shape of United's midfield chain, everything changes. And for me, I'm going to reiterate that point I said there. What got us here will not get us there. Because we've certainly come a long way in the last 12 to 18 months. But these games against the big six, uh, they're becoming a regular sticking point. And I think the blocker for that true transition, that next level up that we all want to go to, is a defensive midfielder. It changes the whole shape of our midfield, the whole mentality of the players, the mentality of Solskjaer. And one thing there with Solskjaer, I think, look, he clearly got burned after that 6-1 against Spurs, like any manager would. And maybe he got burned by the Arsenal one as well. But you can't let yourself get consumed by what didn't work before and therefore never try it again. I just don't think we've got that play in our squad at the moment. That's why the summer's so important. Because I think genuinely that we're a centre-back, a defensive midfielder, and probably a striker away. Three positions, three key positions that we are away from genuinely competing for the Premier League title next year. No doubt.
but they need to be the right players. I don't know whether you can get all three in the same summer. In fact, I know we won't get all three in the same summer. So this is probably going to be over a two-year period for United. But for me, the defensive midfielder is just as important as a centre-back, if not more important. But that's my own opinion. And I think that McTominay and Fred's presence in these big six games is making us defensively very solid, but also at the same time taking away from our ability to win and our ability to make that transition from a plucky underdog team in these games to a team going into it where United are favourites. And for me, we need a defensive midfielder because we need to play a 4-3-3, not a 4-2-3-1 with two screening midfielders. That's, that's holding us back more than helping us in these games now. That's my opinion. And you might disagree, but I think the pattern speaks for itself that we've seen. Let me know what you think in the comments below and whether you agree with me that the offensive midfield is the priority this summer. I really think it is, and maybe I'm wrong. But let me know what you think in the comments below.